What's up guys, we're going to do another spodge problem today. We are going to do this thing called, um, what was the problem actually? What was the problem? I don't actually remember what the problem is. Uh, hold up. Girls and boys. Yeah, we're going to do girls and boys. I'm pretty tired right now, so, and I have to whisper because there's too many people in my house right now. So yeah, today we're going to go do girls and boys. Basically, you're giving G girls and B boys, and then you want to arrange them in a single row. Um, you want to avoid having too many girls and too many boys sitting next to each other. So you want to minimize this gender regularity. So basically, you want to arrange is a maximum number of students in, in the same gender that appear consecutively. Yeah, the gender regularity is a maximum number of students of the same gender that appeared consecutively. So now you want to calculate the minimum gender regularity among all possible arrangements. Okay. So this is actually just using the pigeonhole principle, if you know what the pigeonhole principle is. Um, basically, it's saying that like, uh, if you have like N pigeons, <clears throat> excuse me, and there's M boxes, right? And sooner or later, you're going to have at least one is going to be, well, at least one is going to be uh, in the same box, right? If you have N pigeons and you're trying to fit M boxes, sooner or later, one of them is going to be in the same box if it's greater. But yeah, um, yeah, I'll just show you guys how the code works because it's actually not that bad. Um, basically, you're just going to want to take the larger number and divide it by the smaller number plus one and find the remainder of that. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. Um, there's not much to it. So let's actually go to the solution. So let's do this. All right. So uh, here we have do while and I use a do while because uh, they said end everything if both of them are equal to negative one. Right, so I have my two numbers x and y. I read them in. Um, if they equal to negative one, both equal to negative one, I'm gonna break, and that would just end the program. Otherwise, I need to check if they're equal to zero. If they're equal, both equal to zero, then the answer is zero, because like you have zero boxes, zero things. So you can't really do anything. You're gonna have zero. Now, if they're equal to each other, well, at that point, all the the girls and boys are gonna be in the same line, so it's, the answer just be one. And I could show you guys what I mean by that. Imagine I have G girls and B boys. And basically, I just want to make sure that they don't sit in the same row. So, like, I, I don't want, I want to have, imagine we have uh, three girls and three boys, right? Well, if I do, if I put them all on the same so spot here, the number of consecutive Gs is three. And the number of consecutive Bs is three. And that's not what I want. I don't want that. I want the minimum, right? I want a minimum consecutive. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put G, B, G, B, G, B, right? So in the end here, the consecutive is always going to be one, right? Because there's not there's only one G that's in the same row as each other. There's only one B that's consecutive, right? There's these change. They're not in the same, same. You don't see two G, Gs, right? You don't see number of these. So that's why here the answer would just be one. If they're both equal, right? If three is equal to three, the answer would just be one. So that's what I have here. All right. So anyway, using the pigeonhole principle, uh, if x is less than y, first of all, we need to swap the values. Um, we want to have the larger value first because I'm going to do that here. All right. So yeah, we have, we're going to swap the values first. All right. Now, um, using the pigeonhole principle, if I take x and I, I'm going to mod it by y plus one, right? So I'm going to divide it by it. And then uh, if it's equal to zero, right, then I'm just gonna print out x divided by y plus one. Otherwise, I'm gonna put the, the answer plus one. And the reason why we do answer plus one is because at that point, um, answer plus one would just be like the higher, the upper, more higher value of what it would be. So that's what it would be like. Um, that's pretty much the gist of this. Uh, if x not equal to negative one and y not equal to negative one, then yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of this problem. Um, the reason why we do this plus one is because this is like the ceiling. We're using the ceiling. I didn't feel like using the ceiling function, so it's better to do it this way. But that's all you have to do for this problem. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, this was the part of the next value of spodge. So, yeah. Peace.